The seal row is an amazing back exercise. The only issue is when it comes to a seal row bench, you really only have two options. One, you can use a standard flat bench, but then you have to put a bunch of plates under the feet to get it high enough off the ground that you can have the full range of motion. Or two, you purchase a dedicated seal row bench, which one, is expensive, and two, takes up a lot of space. That's why in this video, we're going to make our own seal row bench that doesn't cost a lot of money, doesn't take up a lot of space, and doesn't take a long time to set up. And I actually got the idea for this build from Kaizen DIY Home Gym. So if you wanna check out his video, you can check that out down in the description. We're gonna take that basic idea, but I'm gonna put my own twist on things. But before we get into the video, hi, my name is Ryan Treadway, founder of treadwaytraining.com, where we turn skinny guys into jacked men. If you want more information on body transforming training and nutrition topics every Sunday, consider subscribing. For this project, you will need a 10 foot two by four, a six foot one by 10, two inch wood screws, six corner braces, a roll of waterproof fabric, some foam, some spray paint. We're gonna be using black to match the rest of our equipment, some adhesive spray, and this is technically optional. This will just make things a little bit easier during one of the steps that you'll see shortly, and some staples. The measurements for the cuts are gonna be specific to your rack, but I will show you how to easily get those measurements. Let's get building. We're gonna need two cuts on your two by four, and these two pieces are gonna make up the support of the seal row bench, and they're gonna to need to be of equal width of your squat rack. So I've got the piece of wood flush on one end over here, so then I'm just gonna simply come over to the outside of the squat rack on this side, and then just make me a nice little line right there. And so this will be the first cut. And then what I will do, I'll do the same thing. I will come from the other side, get it nice and flush here. So come on under here and I'll make a line for the second cut. While we're over here at the saw, we're gonna go ahead and make our two braces that will actually keep the bench from sliding off of the rack. So we'll need to make two cuts that are nine and a quarter inches. There was enough off of that 10 foot piece of wood that we had enough for all of our cuts and a little tiny piece left over. So here's where my interesting little twist comes into play. I want to make a little bit of a face hole like you would see on an actual purpose built seal row bench rather than just making a flat bench that you lay across the safeties and then you're smashing your face into the bench while you're doing your seal rows. So the way that we're going to achieve the face hole is quite simple. So you take your two two by fours You'll lay them down flat, and that's gonna be the spines, that's gonna be what makes the structural integrity of this bench, and then there'll be a little bit of a gap here, and then the two by 10 will go on top. And so you'll want to, this is another part that you'll have to measure out based off of your rack, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to lay the board down, and then kind of lay down and get close to where you'll want to be when you're doing your rows. So in this case, I would want my arms to be at approximately the midpoint of the rack, and I would want my chin to rest on the top of this part. So I'm actually going to bring this back just a little bit, and I'm gonna lay down on here again. So I've got my chin on here. And so this is about where I want my arms to be. And so we'll upholster and pad this part. There'll be a little gap right here. And then we'll make another little headpiece 
right here that we will upholster and pad. So you'll have your chin on here, your forehead on here, and there'll be a little gap in the middle. So once you find where you want your chin to be on the edge right here, then we will come in and we'll take our pencil and we'll mark right here for the first cut on the one by 10. So we've got the body portion of the platform cut out, the main portion. So now we need to figure out how much of a head pillow essentially we need. So I'll lay back down right here, uh, put my chin down right here, feel where my forehead will be. This is not going to be perfectly scientific. So I want the pillow to start right here. So now I'm going to measure from my finger to the end of the rack. And that's how big the wood needs to be for the face pillow portion. So now we will measure off 10 inches and we'll go make our final cut. If you're gonna paint your frame, now is the time to do that. You need to paint the frame before you do the upholstery so that it will have time to dry while you're doing the upholstery. And then when you're done with the seat pad, you can put it all together. Now that we've sanded, we're going to paint. I'm gonna keep the camera way back here because it's super windy outside. Definitely not the ideal conditions for painting, but like I've mentioned, we're in a rush for time. So I'm gonna to try to paint these. I've got these little shims under the blocks here. I'm gonna to try to transfer these inside once I'm done painting because it is also very humid outside. Again, not ideal for painting. So we're gonna paint these, try to transfer them inside without getting the paint on myself to dry. And then while those are drying, we'll finish the upholstery. Now here comes the part where we're getting into a little bit of uncharted territory for me. I've never done upholstery before, so if this turns out good, you'll know that you can do it too, even if you don't have any upholstery experience. So what I am doing, I'm gonna start with the head piece first, simply because it's a little bit smaller, so I can you know, get started with a piece that's not quite as unwieldy. And what I'm doing is I put a little square here, and I'm going to, leave a little bit of excess so that when I take the foam and kind of pull it around and the upholstery and pull it around, there'll be enough to staple it into the bottom and there won't be hard edges. The foam will kind of wrap all the way around and we'll staple it into the bottom. So we're leaving a little bit of excess here and then we will flip the square around this way and then I'll draw me a little line for where I need to cut the foam. So I've got the pad for the headpiece. And I'm debating on if I want to double this foam up. It's not quite as dense as I really wanted it to be. So I'm debating on if I want to double this up and do two inches of foam versus one inch of foam. I believe I am gonna go ahead and do two inches of foam. So 
I'm gonna put my first piece down on top of the foam here. Draw another line. It's not super pretty, but it's gonna be covered up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And this is where the optional adhesive spray comes into play. I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of spray, and then I'm going to stick this down. I'll hit it with a little bit more spray and put the wood down. So that'll just make it a little bit easier to hold everything in place while we're doing the actual upholstery. Square there. Boom. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put down our square corner of the fabric here. And then we'll put our foam. So we want even a little bit more of the fabric than the foam, because it'll be hard to staple through the fabric and the foam into the wood. So we want the fabric to come over a little bit further. So we're just stapling the fabric into the wood. Mark our line here. Little staple here. It's kind of an anchor point in the center. Here, and I'm gonna need to hurry. It looks like it's tearing. I need to get some more staples in here so it's sharing the tension. Oh, yeah, look at that. staples in here then we'll figure out how to do the corners There's my face pillow portion of our workout bench. Not bad. The body portion actually will be easier now that I think about it because there's a lot more length and then the corners I feel like will be a little bit easier since it's not as tight of a space all the way around that we're working with. But it is pretty late so I'm gonna have to pick this up in the morning. I will see you guys back here in about one second. The last step before attaching it all together is to upholster the main portion of the bench.
We've got our upholstery done. I'm gonna check on the paint whenever the paint is dried. We'll mount this all on there and we'll see the finished product. You know, the funny thing is, I laid down here just for this skit. This is actually pretty comfortable. So now all that is left is to mount the pads to the spines and then flip it over and put the little brace pieces down that will keep it from sliding on the rack. And then I'll give some optional steps at the end in case you're wanting to use this for some additional purposes. Just making sure that it is nice and square. So I'm gonna measure it down the line and make sure it's the same width apart. the main portion of the bench ready. The last thing that we have to do is to mount the little under braces on to keep it from potentially being able to slide side to side and it will lock it into place. And we're going to measure based off of the inside of the rack here rather than based off of the pipe safeties because in the future we're probably going to get some spotter arms that hang off the front of the rack and that will have the same measurements as the rack itself. So we're gonna use the rack itself for these measurements. If you were going to be using spotter arms to lay this on top of, you would simply do the same thing, but using your spotter arms to get the measurements. So same thing, we'll take a marker, make a line, make a line, and then put our braces on. completely finished with the project at this point. I've had a chance to use it for a few sets and I'm thoroughly enjoying this thing. It solves all the problems that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It wasn't very expensive to make. It doesn't take long to set up and take down and it doesn't take up a lot of space in your floor. You can literally just take this down, lean it against the wall. It doesn't take up any space at all. Now, one thing that I would change before getting into those optional steps is I wish I would have made the head pillow a little bit shorter so that it was a little bit closer to the edge of the rack and my head would be a little bit further this way so that my arms were closer to the spotter arms. It's not terrible, but if I were to do it again, I would probably chop off maybe two inches off of the length of the head portion, but I'm completely satisfied with the way that it is right now. Getting into those optional steps, if you wanted this to be a little bit more stable, which personally I think this is perfectly stable, I'm not worried about falling myself, but if maybe you're worried about it tipping when you're trying to get in and out of it or something like that, you could make it completely secure in place if you were putting it on spotter arms. They typically have holes in them similar to the rack, so you could simply drill a hole in this underside brace and then have it match up with one of the holes on those spotter arms. And then you could take a hitch pin, simply slide it through, put the little cotter pin in the hitch pin, and then same thing on the other side, boom, boom, and it would actually be locked into place so it wouldn't be possible for it to flip over. And if you did do that and you had the hitch pins, you could actually, take this and mount it to the front of your rack and you could use it for a preacher curl or a dead hang curl setup. And if you wanted to get a little bit of extra versatility out of this piece, one option that I thought about but ultimately decided not to do for reasons that I'll mention in a moment is you could use this for 
a step up box. All you would have to do, it would take almost no time at all, is to simply take an extra one by 10 that is the full length of this right here and mount our braces to it. And then you could still build these two pieces as we've already mentioned, so it would be separate. These pads would be separate from the actual base structure itself. And then you could put some Velcro tape on the underside of these two pads and some Velcro tape on top of the blank or empty one by 10. And then you could just peel this off, peel this off, and then you would have a flat surface that you could use for jumps or for step ups. I ultimately decided not to do this simply because we already have an adjustable plyo box and it would be a redundant piece of equipment, extra cost, and I probably would never use this for that. And that's the build as a whole. If you don't care about the face hole and you just want one long continuous bench so it'll be easier to make, faster to make, then you can check out Kaizen DIY's video. I'll link that down in the description. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. A 10 foot two by four.